So Stripe is at it again with another pretty awesome awards winning website, stripe.dev. There's a lot of awesome stuff we could check out here, but one effect that particularly caught my eye was this kind of subtle typewriter effect. It's a cool extension of a pretty classic animation. And today we're gonna check out how we can do it with React, Tailwind CSS, and Framer Motion. As always, the code is available in both JavaScript and TypeScript on my website, link in the description. Let's go check out some code. Okay, so one more pretty quick look at what we're actually gonna be building here. This is gonna be the end product. And I just wanna take note of kind of a couple of things that we're seeing. So a bunch of pretty basic markup. We're going to speed through all of that pretty quickly. We're mainly just going to focus on this right here. And if we actually look at what's happening here, each letter pops in one at a time, and it has a little black box that surrounds it as it kind of pops in. It waits a second, and then it fades back away. The whole entire sentence fades away before the next one comes in. So that's what we're going to be going for. Let me go ahead and get us back to a starting point, and then I'll come back in a sec. Cool, okay, so back at the starting point, again, I'm using Tailwind CSS, and for our animations, I'm gonna be using Frame or Motion. All of that is already set up. If you don't have that set up, make sure you go ahead and do that now. All that I have to start is a wrapping div that's just making everything the size of the screen, just to kind of put everything in the middle, a little bit of padding, background, then setting a text color, nothing fancy there. So let's go ahead and just move on to getting our markup out of the way, and then we'll go to the animation piece. So I'm gonna create a new component down here that I'm gonna call block in text card. That is going to take in a couple of different props. So it's gonna take the tag that's like, what's the kind of single line of text up at the top, then the main text that goes uh, like the large text, like the full sentence. And then our examples is going to be a list of strings that are gonna be the ones that are kind of popping in and out. This can go ahead and just return a div. It'll just be width full, have some max width, and then a little bit of space on the Y axis. This just adds margins to each of the items to give them space. It's kind of like gap just without flex or grid. For our tagline at the top, I'm gonna add a div with a paragraph tag in it, with a little bit of margin on it, text small, font a little bit thinner, make everything uppercase, and then a horizontal rule. If we save that, we should kind of see that starting to come together. Of course, we do also need to actually use our component up here. So let's do that really quick. And we also are, of course, going to need to pass in our props. So here's what mine's gonna look like. My tag is just gonna say support. The text is actually isn't just gonna be a string because I wanna be able to kind of bold and add different things inside of this text. So this is going to be a React node. And then for our examples, I'm just gonna use this list of strings that I have here. Now we should see support coming up as our tag over here and we can go down the line. For our text line under my div, I can just go ahead and drop that in. It's gonna be a paragraph tag, max width, large, a little bit thinner, just gives us a little, or a little bit uh, less wide at least, gives us a little bit more uh, white space over here. Text of large, and then I'm opening up the line height just a little bit, just since it's a larger text, makes it a little bit more readable. And coming up in a second here under this paragraph tag, we're going to have our, let's say, typewriter, but first let's just add our button below that. This is like our call to action button down here. This can just say contact support for right now or whatever you want it to say. Of course, this can come in as a prop, but this also just has some pretty basic styling, so you can check it out. So with full rounded border, a little bit of border, change color for that, a little bit of padding, and then different hover states, basic stuff. We'll now need to actually start putting together our typewriter effect. So let's make a new component down here. We'll call it typewriter. This will take in our examples. This is just gonna return a paragraph tag and we can you know, start by, I guess, just returning the paragraph tag and let's just render, uh, let's say, we'll just render the first one to start. So we'll say examples at zero. Then we can come up and replace our to-do right here with this. So we just have a div, it's rendering our typewriter and then another lighter horizontal rule. It's gonna go at the bottom there. We should now have something that looks like this. And one final thing before we actually get to the animation, and that's I want not just this examples here, but I want this to be formatted a little bit differently. So over to the left of this, it had like a little box as well as some text that just said example. So to do that, I'm gonna just create a span tag, inline block, size of two, just gives me width and height of both eight pixels and then background neutral. That's gonna give me my little box over here. I'm going to wrap our examples text here in another span tag, which is going to have a little bit of margin on the left. And finally, just some text that says example. And now our layout is done and we can move on to our animation. So before we start actually chunking this up and writing the animation, I like to think about the steps, you know, kind of ahead of time of what we're actually gonna need to do so that it doesn't just kind of look like I'm throwing text at the screen. So let's think about this a little bit. If we think back to our actual animation, what do we need to do? 
Well, every time we change this word, well, I guess, first of all, we need to be able to change this word, right? Every n number of seconds, I want to change this sentence, I'm saying word, but I guess sentence to some other sentence from our examples list. So we're gonna need some way of saying, hey, let's say every five or six seconds, let's switch from this sentence to the next one to the next one, and then round that back to the beginning. Whenever we do that, we're also gonna to need to be able to chunk up this text into individual letters, animate them in with some delay between them. We'll also have that little black box that kind of fades out and makes it look like it's like an old school typewriter type thing. And finally, we're gonna to need to be able to fade the whole sentence out right before it switches to the next one. So we're gonna to need to know how long it's gonna be until we switch from this sentence to the next one and make sure that we fade it out before we get there. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna write a couple of constants up here outside of my typewriter component that are going to kind of define those different delays. That way, as we go through and actually write the code, it looks a little bit more readable and it's easier to adjust later if you want yours to work differently than how mine works. So the first constant that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna call letter delay. This is going to be defined in seconds. That's because this is going to be passed to frame or motion. Frame or motion's timing all is in divisions of seconds. So if you wanted letter to delay to be one full second, this would just be one. You want it to be probably something pretty small. So 0.025 seconds is what I landed on. We're also going to need some way to define how long it takes that little box that pops up from to fade out fully. So that's what I'm gonna call my box fade duration. That's gonna take 0.125 seconds. We need to know how long we want to delay before our full piece of text actually fades out. So I'm gonna say five seconds for that. So this whole thing's gonna pop in, then after five seconds, the full sentence is going to fade out. I want the duration of that fade to be 0.25 seconds. I'll call that main fade duration. And finally, I want it to take five and a half seconds before we actually swap between our different sentences. Now notice that this says 5,500. That's because this is going to be passed to a set interval. It's not gonna be being passed to frame or motion. Set interval expects milliseconds, not seconds. So you can just think of this as five seconds and 500 milliseconds essentially. And with all of that, we can actually start writing the code. What I would like to do first before we actually do our typewriter effect is just actually get everything swapping. So that way every you know five and a half seconds here, we go from this sentence to the next one. Now the way that we're gonna do that is I'm gonna create a piece of state up here at the top using use state, which I'm going to call example index. This is just gonna be a number that can then be passed to this index here as opposed to hard coding it. And we're just gonna swap that every so often. Now, the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create a use effect hook. This hook is not going to have any dependencies. And we're going to call the set interval function. This is going to take a callback function. And the second argument to a set interval is the length of the interval. So for ours, I want to use that swap delay in milliseconds as we just put together a second ago. So essentially, this is going to call this callback function every 5.5 seconds. And all that I'm gonna do inside of my callback here is I am going to update my swap example index by the current index plus one, and we're gonna mod that by the length of the full examples list. This just makes sure that whenever we get to the last element here, we're going to circle back to zero instead of getting an overflow of index bounds, essentially. Now remember, whenever you do a set interval, you're gonna to wanna to actually be able to clear that whenever we do our kind of cleanup. So whenever this use effect unmounts. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take the return value of my set interval here. I'm gonna set that to a constant for later. And now I'm going to return from my use effect a callback function like this, which is just going to call clear interval and I can pass it in that interval ID. Now this way, whenever this unmounts, it will actually clean up this set interval. And if we wait here a second, we should see that this switches. Let's see. Oh, I guess it's not gonna switch because we actually need to use the index. So let's take example index here. Let's replace our examples at zero with example index. And now I saw it switch once. Just wait a second here, waiting, and there we go. So now we're swapping our words and we can get to actually doing the typewriter piece. Now the way just about any typewriter animation is going to work is we need to actually split our list of uh, words here or just our, our full string here into an, a list of individual characters, right? So we need W, H, A, T, et cetera, et cetera. That way we can independently animate each one of those characters. 
So the way that I'm gonna do that is right here where I have my examples index. Let me give myself a little bit more space here so we can see what's going on. I'm going to come to the end of this and I'm going to say split. We'll split this on just an empty string. You can then map over this list. I want to pull out both the letter as well as the index of that letter for my keys. And we're going to return for right now, let's just, so we can see it's still working, let's just return a span tag. This should render our letter. And the key can be, let's say, we'll do example index because that should be unique for each word. Then we'll go dash v current index. I think that should work. Now, if I save that, you're not gonna see anything necessarily change just yet. But if I now go in here, we're gonna see if we look down in my console that every individual letter has its own span tag that we can now animate however we please, as opposed to just being one long string. I did also notice that there's now no space here. We can fix that by just adding some curly braces right here after example, adding a space, and now we have our space there. And that is looking good. So we can now move forward. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I actually don't wanna just directly pass this letter to this span tag. I want to have a inner span tag, let's say just something like this, which can take our letter. And then below that, I wanna have our little block. So that's just gonna look something like this. Now our outer wrapping span, so that would be this guy right here. Give us some more space. Add a class name and I want to give this a position of relative because this little block, I just want to take up the full space of this outer span. And the classes that I'm going to add for that will look something like this. So this span, position absolute, bottom three pixels. I'm insetting these a little bit so that you can actually see space between all of the letters. So bottom of three pixels, left of one pixel, right, we can just set it zero, top three pixels, again, just kind of squishing it down and then just giving it a random background color. If I save that, we should now be able to see what I'm going for, right? Now, instead of just having, uh, you know, like a full bar, because we have these insets, we have a little bit of space between all of our characters here that we can then fade out. Now for all of my spans here, I'm gonna be able to wanna animate every single one of these individually. So if I scroll back up, we're gonna notice that I've already imported motion from frame or motion. If you've never used motion or frame or motion before, that's totally okay. Essentially how this motion thing works is I can take any of my normal JSX elements. So like the span right here, this one right here, this one right here, just add a cursor on all of them. I can turn these all into motion dot spans. And these give me access to a bunch of cool different props that I can pass for defining my animations. So I can say animate is equal to blah, blah, blah. And I can animate this however I want. Um, we'll we'll kind of see as we go through this, how this is going to work. So we can start maybe down here on our block span. I guess the order that we do these doesn't really matter. It's gonna to come to the same result here in a second. But how I want this to work, I wanna start the initial state of this span, like this block span down here at the bottom. Again, this is just a box with an opacity of zero. And what I wanna do is I wanna animate this really quickly from zero to one back to zero. Now, the reason that I'm doing zero, one, zero, instead of just saying, hey, I wanna animate this to one is because I still need to be able to control that each of these individual characters just comes in one at a time. So you're gonna see that the way that I'm gonna define the animation times for this, so I'll just come down here under animate, we'll say transition, and this can take a value that's called times. This length has to be the same as this length, and it's essentially zero to 100%, but I'm saying between this value and this value, I only want that to take one tenth of the time that this animation takes to go. So essentially it's gonna go immediately from zero up to one, then back to zero. Now I also need to add a delay to all of these, and I want that to be staggered based on which letter we're currently on. So we're mapping over this, we're pulling out the index, and we're multiplying that by our letter delay, which we defined up here a second ago, that's 0 0.025. We can then add our duration, which also we already defined, box fade duration, 0 0.125 seconds. And we can just add an easing, save that, and we should now kind of see what's going on. So every time this switches, we should see the boxes kind of flow from left to right like this. Nice. Now we need to do the same thing for the letter. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up, give us a little bit more space on my upper span right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop these in. This looks very similar, but I don't need to do that kind of little hacky workaround of the, the three separate times. All that I need to do is say opacity zero, animate this to an opacity of one, over this duration. So it's immediately just gonna pop up essentially. The reason that I'm doing that is because we have the little box that's covering it. We don't really need a, a, a fade over time. You can add it if you'd like. And I'm just doing the same kind of delay as what I was doing a second ago. So just multiplying the current index by that letter delay. Again, just the exact same thing as down here. If we save that, see how that looks. 
There we go. Let's go. Let's see another. There we go. Nice. So now we have our full typewriter effect coming in, but we do still need to be able to fade the whole thing out, like the whole entire sentence out before it switches to the next one. Now this can just happen on our wrapping span up here. So now we have one extra kind of piece that we can use here. And the way that we're going to do that is just going to look something like this. So again, these are all just basic opacity fades that we're actually animating here. I am starting with an opacity of one on the outer wrapping span. I want to animate that to zero. I want to delay it by whatever this fade delay is. So remember that's a larger number, that's five seconds. And five seconds just has to be smaller than this swap delay in milliseconds right here. I want the duration of that to be my main fade duration. So that's this 0.25 seconds. Five plus 0.25 is still less than 5.5, gives us still a quarter of a second from the end of the fade to the next word or the next phrase. And again, just adding an ease of ease in out because it looks a little bit nicer. And now we can watch, let's wait, let's see. Three, four, five, fade out, switch to the next one, perfect. And that is going to be our full animation. Everything types in, switches, types in again, fades out, looks awesome. If you got anything out of this video, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you're interested in more cool animated UI components for React, I have a whole website full of them down in the description. It's called hover.dev, check that out. But beyond that, I will see you guys next time. Peace.